thank you, Ludger, and uh, thank you all for um, joining this this session about migration and Corona. I actually listened for the fir first lecture I listened, which we had, which you had, Ludger, uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, I think this is a, a great opportunity for all of us to to uh, tackle the issue of. Uh, migration in the time of corona from different perspectives and as professor uh, Prius said i'm um, i'm from the faculty of law university of zagreb and i am a lawyer i also hold a master of science in political sciences uh, must, uh, so and, I'm, and i have a phd in uh, uh, migration and asylum issues i'm uh, currently associate professor at the Faculty of Law on the Department for Public Administration and I teach uh, administrative science, public administration, but also I have a course on migration, asylum uh, um, and uh, foreigners at the public administration studies. And my today's topic uh, will be about will be about the access to asylum protection and COVID-19 and the challenges at the EU external 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 borders. Maybe just a few sentences about our faculty, University uh, and University of Zagreb. We are quite a huge university. We have like 30 faculties and three academies of art, over 7, uh, 70,000 students on, and almost 8,000 uh, academic staff. And we run, run more, a bit less than 600 study programs. Uh, 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 as Professor Priest said, um, um, my, my uh, expertise is in forced migration with focus on the asylum issues, but also the integration of migrants and refugees in the, in the host, uh, host societies. And today, uh, as uh, I said, I will talk about the access to asylum protection and, uh, during, the corona, during the corona crisis. Um, so, uh, this will be the, 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 the title and the content of my presentation. I will start with a few introductory words. Then I will remind you about the access to territory and access to asylum protection, some international and European standards. Then I will speak about the uh, COVID-19 and access to territory for both migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers within those mixed migration flows. Then I will turn to situation at southeastern EU borders. I will focus on the member states, EU member states, on at those parts of the, of, the, of the EU, which is usually called the Balkan uh, route of migration. And then I will finish with some, some concluding remarks, and then we can have a discussion and I will take the questions and maybe pose some questions to, 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 to our students. So first, uh, as the, uh, but before I start, I have to say that I have here in my flat rather demanding cats. So if you hear any funny noises, please disregard them. I will try to deal with that. She is currently uh, uh, outside of this room, but you never know with cats, you know. So please disregard any, any funny noises that you might, might hear. So uh, about the uh, introduction. First, um, as I said, this lecture will focus on the access to territory. I will put the focus on the situation of southeastern EU borders. Uh, and um, uh, I decided to put the, the focus on this part of the, of the EU because this is where so-called Balkan route in 2015 and 16 served as the main corridor for hundreds of thousands, as we all know, of asylum seekers, refugees, and migrants on their way mainly to Germany, but also to further north. So, uh, border restrictions, which have been imposed as a part of the measures to respond to corona all over the world, not only in the EU, um, we can see that may limit the possibility to seek international protection and therefore might be a violation of the international legal principle of non refoulement And the UNHCR estimated that by mid-April, 167 countries all over the world have fully or partially closed their borders to contain the spread of the coronavirus and at least 57 states are making no exceptions for people seeking asylum and therefore limiting the rights of persons to seek protection from persecution, human rights abuses or war. 
in the absence of regular means to cross the borders of the states, uh, migrants, asylum seekers and refugees are forced to use irregular pathways. We can see that already. And um, often they are facilitated by smugglers, which increase the risk of human trafficking, exploitation and abuse. On March 16, the EU has brought a decision on temporary restriction of non-essential travel to the EU in view of the COVID-19, uh, but with the exemptions to that decision for persons in need of international protections, protection or those who must be admitted uh, for other humanitarian reasons. The Commission also issued guidelines to member states on how to implement this entry ban, again stressing uh, that the person in need of international protection should be exempted and the principle of non-reform should be upheld. However, in practice, vast majority of refugees and asylum seekers have faced limitations in accessing EU territory. We are currently witnessing that border closures have left refugees and asylum seekers stranded at EU borders, often in very inadequate conditions. As irregular movements and entry will increase the number of people who are not detected or known to authorities, this situation also can pose and may pose additional challenge to public health and might even contribute to the spread of coronavirus among migrants in one hand and uh, within the local population on the second. Uh, but first, I will just uh, briefly give a few remarks about the right to access to asylum protection and non refoulement principle, as it is enshrined in the international law, but also the EU law and national, national legislation as well. Um, first, as a general rule, we know that states have a sovereign right to control the entry and continued presence of non-nationals, in their territory. However, international law, EU law, and the European Convention for Human Rights impose some limits to this uh, exercise of sovereignty by the states. First, nationals have the right to enter their own country, and um, in addition, EU nationals have the right, general right under EU law, uh, to enter other EU member states. Second, international law, law but also the European law and the uh, European Convention for Human Rights provides that measures to non-nationals uh, may not prevent them from seeking asylum from persecution and they should be protected for, from non reform Just to remind you that the non reform principle, as it is enshrined in the Article 33 of the Refugee Convention, reads as follows. First paragraph, no contracting state shall expel or return a refugee in any manner whatsoever to the frontiers of or territories where his life or freedom would be threatened on account of his race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social uh, group or a political opinion. And the second paragraph, the benefit of the present provision may not, however, be claimed by a refugee for whom there are reasonable grounds for regarding as a danger to the security of the country in which he or she is or who have been convicted by the final judgment of a particular serious crime constitutes a danger to the community of that so, the non refoulement principle prohibits the rejection at borders of persons at risk of persecution or other serious harm. The pro prohibition, this prohibition is engaged as soon as refugee or asylum seeker arise, arrives uh, at the frontiers of a given state uh, and as soon as a person presents him or herself at the border claiming to be in a risk of fearing return to his or her country of origin or any other country. In this way, the division of refugee protection responsibilities um, uh, generally follows the territorial borders. So whatever country refugees find themselves in, that state is responsible for not sending them back to persecution. In principle, it requires, this principle requires authorities to undertake a status determination procedure, and if it is determined that the risk of persecution exists, the state is precluded from denying entry or forcibly removing the individual concern. In practice, the states are using uh, different measures to prevent refugees and asylum seekers, as well as any other migrants, to reach their borders in order to prevent being held responsible for their protection. Here I will just briefly sketch several measures in the EU that in practice influence the possibility of asylum seekers to access territory and seek protection from persecution. 
So first, and the old one, the oldest one, policy is a visa policy. So under the EU law, common rules exist for EU member states regarding the issuance of short-term visas. But individuals who wish to seek asylum in the EU are primarily nationals of countries requiring a visa to enter the EU. And as these individuals often do not qualify for an ordinary visa, they may have to cross the border in an irregular manner in order to seek protection. So they are not uh, viable for getting visa, normal visa to enter the EU. The second group of measures is so-called the uh, externalization of border controls. This means that remote border control measures are carried out in a third countries to prevent people, which are not the citizens of that uh, third country, from irregularly entering the EU. It includes measures such as posting abroad uh, immigration liaison officers and document experts and bi bilateral agreements between the third country and the EU member state. It also includes operations in high seas, either missions of interception at sea or rescue at sea. The third group um, is a bit broader group, which and includes the implementation of different measures of border surveillance and border controls. First, uh, under the Schengen Borders Code, EU member states have a duty to prevent unauthorized border crossing and to counter cross-border criminality. In that, EU member states often co cooperate with neighboring third countries, requesting those countries to intercept people spotted by technical means while they are still on the territory of that third country, and thus enabling the third country to stop the migrants and asylum seekers before they actually reach the border of the EU member state. Second, the patrols carried out at the land borders or at the vicinity of the border prevent people from entering the territory. So border surveillance is carried out throughout different means, such as stationary mobile units. And in extreme cases, we saw the, that type of cases, police officers, border guards may shoot uh, in the air to, or use uh, physical force to stop the migrants crossing the borders. The aim is to prevent, again, unauthorized border crossings and to apprehend the individuals who cross the border in, in a regular manner. Uh, and in Schengen, the Schengen border code, uh, Borders Code use the expression of discouraging people from avoiding the checks at crossing points. And we will see later that uh, this discouragement is quite often used by many, many Schengen member states but also the aspiring member Schengen, uh, Schengen, uh, members of the Schengen area, such as Croatia. Third, uh, uh, at the border crossing point, so we are now moving to the uh, border crossing points. Border guards, of course, check documents during the first, second line, or at gate checks at the, at the, at the airports, and refuse entry to those individuals who do not have the required documents, either passport or visa. However, it is difficult for an undocumented person, so persons without documents, uh, who come from further afield to reach a border crossing point at the EU external borders. If they lack documents, they would normally not be allowed through the neighboring third countries checkpoints. For example, uh, people coming from, from Syria would have to pass many different states who would then again try to, or uh, are obliged to check their, their documents at the regular border crossings. Uh, in addition, uh, EU and member states have so-called entry ban, which prohibits individuals from entering the state from which they have been expelled. This ban is typically valid for a certain period of time and ensures that individuals who are considered dangerous or non, or, or non desirable are not given a visa or otherwise admitted to the entry to, en, uh, to enter the territory. And the fourth group uh, so uh, it's the case when the migrants, uh, refugees, and asylum seekers within the mixed migration flows have physically crossed the border. Uh, in that case, border guards can expel the migrants or use force to move them out of the territory or the territorial sea. In practice, for immigration control purposes, many member states have creatively tried to move the border inwards. For example, some member states, and we will so see that uh, um, for the for the southeastern um, uh, external border, recently built fences on their territory to prevent migrants 
also refugees and asylum seekers from crossing the green border. And migrants might be held in detention facilities established at the border or at the airport, not only migrants, but also we will see asylum seekers and refugees. And the final group of measures, I call them other measures, aim to prevent uh, unauthorized access to EU territory. Uh, first, EU law provides for sanctions against those who transport undocumented migrants into the EU as well, and this is quite important, section, sanctions against those who facilitate unauthorized entry, transit and residence. And this facilitation directive, which has been, uh, um, which has been uh, used and uh, uh, in member states' legislation and transfer, transported to, 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 to um, member states' legislation, in practice in many member states, led to widespread criminalization of civil society actors that have saved lives of refugees and other migrants in central Mediterranean or Aegean seas and who have provided basic services and assistance upon their arrival. We will saw that also in some, some uh, Eastern member states. Now moving to the um, issue of COVID-19 and access to, to territory. First of all, we of course have to agree that states are entitled to take measures to establish and manage risk to public health which in case of COVID-19 are directed and containing infectious disease and preventing its spread. Those measures are also directed to non-nationals arriving at borders. And the global database has been developed by the International Organization for Migration, or IOM, which map uh, impacts of border restrictions posed by the COVID-19 on human mobility across global, regional and country levels. And later I will show you the, when I finish, I will show you the, 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 the website, very interesting website where you can see how um, different, mem different states all over the globe uh, put some border restrictions and you can check each member each state how how uh, the state uh, use this this border restrictions and according to the IOM data a total of 221 countries territories or areas have issued almost 64,000 travel restrictions as of uh, 21st of May and these restrictions are ranging from closure of borders entry restrictions for passengers from restricted countries, changes in visa requirements and entry restrictions for certain nationalities, and of course medical measures such as quarantine or medical screening and the requirement of a, sort of the medical certificate stating that the person had a negative COVID-19 test. Of course, those public health measures are not specifically targeting persons seeking international protection, asylum seekers and refugees, but those measures may have far-reaching and have far-reaching consequences on such persons. Uh, border restrictions influencing asylum seekers and migrants, including denials of entry, pushback at borders, we will come to the, 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 this notion. Forced returns uh, have been reported in different regions worldwide, not only in the EU, but worldwide. There are suspension of search and rescue operations, uh, closing of ports of arrival, which leaves rescued individuals at sea, stranded in unsafe boats for extended periods, or they need to disembark in unsafe ports, unsafe places, such as Libya, for example. In some cases, states have returned asylum seekers to transit countries to await lifting of the border restrictions and access to an asylum procedure at an indefinite point in the future, which in practice means that they effectively suspending the right to seek asylum. In some locations, we have witnessed uh, collective expulsions of migrants and refugees and asylum seekers, which have been recorded following the reports of COVID-19. Furthermore, COVID-19 has a huge impact on vulnerable population in camps and camp-alike settings, as people in camps typically have a greater underlying burden of disease and worse health condition than the general, us, than general population, and they frequent, frequently face greater exposure to risks such as poor hygiene, weak uh, immune, immune defense. 
uh, and the impact of coronavirus on refugees goes beyond this imminent risk of infection. The crisis has prompted European states, EU states, to delay the implementation of their recent decision to receive the most vulnerable refugees, and this includes the relocation of 1,600 un unaccompanied refugee children from Greece to other EU member states. And those EU member states have temporarily closed their borders and this decision is currently not implemented. And of course, the cancellation of almost all flights across the Europe has also contributed to the halt of resettlement operations, including those um, implemented by the UNHCR and IOM, first of all, first and foremost from Turkey. Uh, and I will just show you one, one um, this is the picture graph from this uh, uh, IOM uh, database that I mentioned. Here you can find and see the, the, the website. Uh, here you can see how they, I hope that you can see it's a bit small uh, and the numbers are small, but you can see on the graphs how the, the, the arrivals fell from the beginning of the beginning of the year 2020. And this last last here is the May 2020 and here you can see per countries you can we can here see uh, it's Bulgaria, Greece, Italy, Malta and Spain how the number of arrivals in general arrivals both migrants, refugees, asylum seekers within the mixed migration fall, uh, flows has fallen due to border restrictions. So we know that this is actually happen, happening at the uh, external borders, external borders of the EU, by any means. So the, the migrants, refugees, and asylum seekers are stopped, and we will see how by any means at the EU external borders, not only south southeastern external borders, but also by Italy, Malta, Spain, and other other member states. Moving further to the uh, situation at southeastern EU. So <clears throat> here I will focus <clears throat> only on the question of protection of the borders and border restrictions due to COVID-19. And if information were av available, the restrictions towards asylum seekers and refugees within mixed migration flow. Uh, of course, it doesn't mean that there are no positive developments in regard to asylum in those countries. For example, for the last several years, Croatia is putting additional efforts to integration of refugees. We are among those member states which will relocate some unencompanied children from Greece. We also implement resettlement scheme. Uh, but uh, what those member states have in common is that we are perceived by migrants and refugees, more or less, only as a transit country for the further north, to most, mostly to Germany, but also to the Nordic, Nordic countries. But at the same time, we are expected to protect EU external borders to any cost. So I will, uh, this part of presentation, I will give throughout the pictures, okay? And uh, those pictures which uh, are giving the, the insight of, on what's going on on the EU external uh, border are, were collected uh, in last uh, few weeks. And those uh, are based on the reports of the, and the information I will present are based on the reports of NGOs, international organizations, and media media outlets. As, as, uh, as for now, we don't have scientific in, in, uh, um, researches, scientific researches on the impact of the corona border restrictions on the asylum uh, seekers and refugees, but this this will come in the in the probably in the near future so i will cover several countries so starting from greece moving to croatia and then slovenia why slovenia slovenia is not on the uh, eu external border but it's in the uh, on the external border of the schengen schengen area so this is why i decided to put also to include slovenia in this presentation of course hungary Bulgaria and Romania, and this picture was um, taken the situation and migrant routes throughout the Balkans to the Germany where uh, those, those uh, migra migrant routes were uh, active during the 2015 and 16 uh, uh, movements, but also are these, those, those routes are also active 
all the time, you know, just shifting from one route to another. So first, first country is Greece. So we all saw the, the pictures and the videos of uh, things that were happening in February in, and March uh, 2020 at the Greek-Turkish border. Uh, in response to COVID-19, the Greek government gradually provided restrictions since the end of February, and one of the first measures was the shutdown of the Greek-Turkish borders. Uh, invoking the Article 78 of the Treaty on Functioning uh, of the European Union, which for, provides for the adoption of provisional measures in emergency migratory situations at external borders, Greece announced the suspension of all asylum applications. The suspension of asylum applications during March, following tensions at the border with Turkey, elapsed at the end of the month and it was replaced by a general freeze of activities of the Greek Asylum Service until May 15 due to COVID-19. In the meantime, NGOs have reported pushbacks and returns of those found entering the Greek borders. At the same time, at the same time, refugee camps across the country, across the Greece, were placed on the lockdown in mid-March. That has so far lasted until late May, even as lockdown measures were relaxed for the other citizens, for Greek citizens. And throughout April, Greece battled three different COVID-19 outbreaks in mainland reception, reception facilities, such as Rizona refugee camp, which is near Athens. There was the 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 there was outbreak of COVID-19 among, uh, among migrants, also refugees and asylum seekers uh, uh, who, were, who were placed in that, in that camp. In the meantime, this is also quite interesting, I, I have to say that in the meantime, the new draft law amending asylum legislation was submitting for, for public consultation. So during the, during the COVID-19 crisis. This, this draft law met criticism by the UNHCR, by the local and international NGOs, because its measures include limiting appeals on legal aid, rejecting asylum applicants who lived in a third country for two months without persecution, etc. In addition, during this time, during, so during the, the, the COVID, COVID, uh, uh, COVID situation, operation of civil society supporting refugees and migrants in Greece has been in danger as new rules have been adopted on the registration and certification of Greek and foreign NGOs active in the area of asylum, migration, and social inclusion, as well as their members, staff, and volunteers. The regulations set out so far on the operation of NGOs include stringent, disproportionate, and arbitrary requirements. So the Ministry of Migration and Asylum now can deny registration to NGOs and or individuals even when they fulfill the legal requirements on the basis of assumptions relating to the quality of their activities, personality, and they can even revoke registration where it deems that an organization is not adequately performing its functions. And we can, I, I think that we can all agree that such powers have very boring repercussions on the rule of law and the uh, transparency, transparency in Greece. So moving to Croatia. In past three years, the border between Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia has become a gathering point for asylum seekers and migrants aiming to reach Western EU countries. According to many reports, it is also where they are stopped, both migrants and refugees, and pushed back by the Croatian police. And um, you can see the, the, the left picture. This is the picture from September, September 2019, but it's quite important because according to the NGO Border Violence Net Network, the videos were recorded with hidden cameras in a forest near a uh, border with Bosnia. And they were filmed between uh, September 29 and October 10 and showed, those videos show at least 54 illegal group expulsion of migrants, so-called pushbacks from Croatia to Bosnia. So those people were not allowed to seek asylum. Those people were uh, collectively expelled uh, from Croatia to Bosnia. 
And uh, many of those caught in the attempt to cross the border report being beaten up, threatened by the Croatian police officers. The right picture on the right side, this is the picture from the UK Guardian, which in May has published an article titled Croatian police accused of spray, paint, spray painting heads of asylum seekers, saying that the Croatian police are allegedly spraying painting the heads of migrants and asylum seekers with crosses when they attempt to cross the border from Boston. And of course, our government and the Ministry of Interior denied all allegations or those allegations for la from last two years about the pushbacks and mistreatment of migrants and asylum seekers, but also especially this one published, this article published in the UK Guardian. So Croatia, like, for example, Italy in the Mediterranean, is afraid of registrations of people entering uh, the, the, the Croatia because this would, uh, this would force it forced us to take them, uh, those migrants back once they are rejected at the subsequent border, for example, in Slovenia or a border with Italy or border with Hungary. Also, Croatia as aspiring Schengen member states is expected to protect the external border at any cost. And we have to, you know, uh, we have to provide uh, information that we are doing our best in protecting this external border. Many migrants and asylum seekers remain blocked on the Bosnian side of the frontier where the IOM has set up temporary reception camps. So uh, this is why I will include a few pictures from Bosnia because although it's not the member state but the, the situation in Bosnia is quite alarming right now and that is why I wanted to put also um, a few information and give you a few, few, few information about the situation in Bosnia. So. Um, uh, the IOM, and you can see the picture right, on the right, in total about 1,000 people who have been living on the streets of Bihać, which is the uh, Bosnian city close to the Croatian border, uh, in recent weeks are relocated to uh, one camp in, within the, within the um, territory of Bosnia because there were no enough space at the existing reception centers. Uh, especially two camps, which are called Bira and Miro. Uh, those are the camps for the mig uh, for the uh, primarily migrants, but because of the mixed migration flows, of course, there are some asylum possible potential asylum seekers and possible refugees among them. Uh, the, so those two camps are more amount to little more than tents and containers, and they are hosted inside the form of factories, and they have very poor hygiene conditions, no light, limited access to humanitarian support. And some of the people accommodated in Vira have declared they are not receiving enough food or medical help. There is only one doctor in the camp and social distancing is not an option in this type of the conditions and the, 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 the camp. And some of those who showed uh, COVID-19 symptoms have not been able to self-isolate in this, in this situation. And the picture on the left from the Reuters uh, shows the migrant protests over the conditions in one of those camps, Miral Camp, which is located in Western Bosnia this happened in February 2020 and you can see that the police forces were called to, to settle the, the, the situation. So Slovenia. Uh, in this time the Slovenian government has confirmed just recently like a, uh, two weeks several weeks ago has confirmed that the, the Slovenia plans to put an additional 40 kilometers of anti-migrant fencing along the borders with Croatia but uh, the, the Slovenian government did not specify at which locations citing confidential confidential and confidential reasons. Uh, Slovenia has already set up uh, 900 and, uh, 196 kilometers long fence along the border with Croatia to prevent, of course, undocumented mig migrants entering uh, the, uh, the country illegally. And this fence includes 116 kilometers of razor wire fence. In the meantime, again, 
act on provisional measures for judicial, administrative, and other public matters to cope with the spread of COVID-19 has been interpreted to mean that the asylum procedures are not urgent. And the Ministry of Interior, which is in charge for the, the, the status determination procedure in Slovenia, has suspended asylum procedures until the 1st of July. Ministry officials are now accept, are not accepting any new asylum requests, nor they do conduct interviews with asylum seekers or make decisions in individual requests, uh, asylum cases. Also, uh, during the corona crisis, the Slovenian government tried to activate one article of their Defense Act, which would give additional powers to the Slovenian army in relation to border management. However, thankfully, the parliament, Slovenian parliament rejected the proposal. And in relation to return procedure based on the readmission agreement with Croatia, all individuals must be tested for COVID-19 in order to be returned. If they are not, the Croatian police will not accept. Hungary. So, well, Hungary, very, well, to say it's specific uh, case in terms of the migration, migration governance and the, the, uh, the, the situation in Hungary is a bit different, I would say, than in other, other member states. First of all, uh, state of the emergency due to COVID-19 includes in Hungary includes suspension of entries into transit zones as of as, as uh, of the start of March which effectively means that the access to asylum is suspended until further notice as applications this is also something which Hungary um, uh, have this 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 practice that uh, the uh, 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 um, applications for asylum can only be made in transit zones so suspension of entries into the transit zones means in practice that there is no access to asylum. However, in the meantime, this is also very interesting, the EU Court of Just Justice has ruled that Hungary's arbitrary detention of asylum seekers in border zones, so these transit zones, is quite, uh, actually illegal. And uh, nearly 300 people are held in transit zones on the Hungary-Serbia border. And this ruling of ACJ paving, uh, ruling paves the way for those asylum seekers to be released, as the ECJ ruling means Hungary must devise new asylum laws. And uh, you can see on the right side, the right picture, an Iraqi family uh, which was stranded in the transit zone for two years with the children. And now it was released after the ECJ ruling in May 2000, in May 2020. However, of course, um, in response to the ECJ, State Secretary, Hungarian State Secretary of Defense, stated that the Hungary's government and the ruling alliance will still do it, its utmost to maintain the fence and military police surveillance along the country's southern border. And he guaranteed the continued operation of the transit zone, despite the, 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 the ECJ rule. Also, in addition, Hungarian government spokesman said that the future application, this is quite interesting, for asylum will have to be submitted to consulates, Hungarian consulates in neighboring countries. So if implemented, this measure means that the consulates will be able to reject requests without the asylum seekers ever stepping on Hungarian territory. Also, Hungarian Prime Minister uh, Viktor Orban has claimed that there is a link, quotes, between coronavirus and illegal mi migration. And also quite uh, important, uh, in the last period, also during the, the corona crisis, the fight against migrant smuggling has been used as a justification by the government to, to start judicial and fiscal harassment, we can call it harassment, of humanitarian and human rights civil society organizations and to reduce their capacity to uphold fundamental rights and the rule of law in the country. So this is the situation in Hungary. Moving to Bulgaria, so in 2000, and I have to say that it's not, it was not that easy to find the information about the uh, Bulgaria and Romania, and one of the reasons 
for this situation is the, the lack of vibrant civil society in those two countries. And uh, that is why it's not easy to follow developments in, in Bulgaria and Romania. However, I will give it a few, few uh, information and lines about those countries. First, Bulgaria in 2017 has completed a fence of over 200 kilometers on the Turkish border. And in the beginning of March 2020, during the crisis at the Greek-Turkish border, according to the journalists that were present on the borders, numerous migrants have declared that they uh, want to avoid Bulgaria, quotes, because they will be shoot, they will shoot us with real bullets. This is the, those are the quotes of migrants. Also, in recent years, the government has tolerated the activities of paramilitary groups along the border, already authors of abuses and violence against those who had crossed the border, crossed the border uh, illegally. And on the right picture, you can see one of those paramilitary groups, Vasilevsky Military Union, which is present and uh, patrolling over the, over the external uh, border of, of Bulgaria with the Turkey. Uh, besides, during the COVID-19, besides COVID-19 measures that apply to the entire population, the government implemented a series of measures directed at the foreigners in the country and uh, all similar to, to, to Slovenia and also Croatia and other countries, all pending administrative procedures are currently suspended. Uh, including those for the, for the uh, new asylum seekers. Um, or, or, or we can say all procedural actions on applicants for international protections that require in-person participation of asylum seekers. And newly arrived asylum seekers, according to the Bulgarian government, are quarantined for a period of 14 days with an active monitoring of their health, but we don't, I don't, I was not able to find data of the number of newly registered asylum seekers in the last two months in Bulgaria or any country. Uh, in terms of the Bulgar of uh, Romania, even less information are publicly available. What we know that the border guard agency has been reinforced and with the measures tightened to prevent illegal, so-called illegal migrations. And the president, the Romanian president, declared the state of emergency and the government issues military ordinances determining the emergency measures. And during the state of emergency, all activities of the registry are suspended, including uh, most likely those, those uh, for the asylum seekers. And on this picture, it's quite interesting. It's from the February 2020. It's from the website of the uh, Romanian border police and um, they are a bit bragging that they have discovered 25 Syrian nationals who have tried to illegally cross the border into Hungary and uh, they giving some data about the, the about the, the age and of course the nationality of the group and here you can see they never although the, the the group is coming from Syria here you can see that in this press release there are no any references to the possible situation that those persons are maybe potential asylum seekers or the refugees they just said that the uh, legal measures that are required will be taken against those okay against those um, so, we can see that the countries at the EU southern, eastern, external borders are implementing different border measures aimed at halting irregular migrations, which, as we know, include also refugees and asylum seekers who move irregularly and often use smugglers to enter the EU, of course. I don't want to say that only those countries implement these stringent border control, control measures. And as a sort of a reminder of the situation of other, on other external borders, I can show you two pictures published in the Financial Times article in March 2020, which shows that very sophisticated technology uh, technology of um, uh, protects of the borders in line with the violence which is also being used to discourage migrants and asylum seekers it's a bit small but you can see uh, different member states from the UK but also some states which are not 
mem EU member states to Albania using very different ways to control and technologies, especially the technologies to, uh, to control the borders. And here on the right picture, you can see that not only southern eastern external border is uh, are using the physical barriers also we have in uh, Calai in France also uh, Spain enclaves in Mor Morocco are using using um, this type of the, the physical barriers to prevent to prevent uh, migrants and refugees to enter the and to discourage migrants and asylum seekers to to to, to enter the the EU. And uh, going uh, to the final remarks, um, I, I pose the question. And uh, the question is um, what we can expect. So how the, uh, what is the future of asylum in the post-COVID-19 world? And as the researcher of Max Planck Society in his blog, he said, he posed the question, will asylum in the EU become collateral damage in the COVID-19 crisis. I hope not, but we will see. So as regard to the future developments, uh, we know that COVID-19 is, is expected to have a long lasting and multi-dimensional impact on mobility systems in general. And states uh, already started to adjust their immigration practices to accommodate new processes and controls on mobility with growing integration between public health and immigration system during and post pandemic and additional measures to combine immigration and health related checks are already being discussed even for the post corona uh, post corona time these may include for example the inclusion of digital vaccination cards as a visa requirement number of countries are discussing the possibility of issuing COVID-19 medical certificates or so-called immunity passports. And all those ideas reflect an intensified recognition of the interdependence, interdependence between immigration procedures and public health considerations with health measures becoming a key component of all future regulation migra migratory scheme. They might be. However, while border restrictions or closure may be just justified, of course, exceptions are needed to safeguard, safeguard basic rights, including those for refugees and asylum seekers. In many cases, such exemptions are not being made in law or practice, creating serious risks of violation of rights. In case health risks are identified, in the case of individuals or groups of refugees or asylum seekers, other measures could be taken, such as testing, quarantine, which would enable authorities to manage their arrival in safe manner while respecting the principle of non refoulement which we mentioned in the beginning. And denial of access to territory without safeguards to protect against refoulement cannot be just justified, on, in my opinion, on the ground, grounds of any health risks. Otherwise, and this is quite important, I think. This would be a breach of international EU law, of course, but in addition, it could send the persons into orbit in search of a state willing to receive them. In regard to the southeast border, EU south external border, as the Europe is slowly, we can see that also in Croatia, we are slowly reopening after, after imposing the strict lockdown conditions. Uh, this Balkan migra migration route is also springing into life again. We can see that already. We can see that at the Croatian border with Serbia and Bosnia, migrants and refugees are again preparing for what they call the game, which is the, 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 the name of this, uh, the term which is used for the uh, many attempts to irregularly cross the border and move forward west and some of them try the game like for 10, 15, 20 times on the road. And um, countries at the Balkan route, as I said, including those who are already in member states, we are still mainly perceived as a transit countries, but we are obliged to protect the EU external border. Regarding uh, access to asylum and the external at the EU external borders, there are several issues that should be addressed. 
First, this is especially the case in the situation of prolonged crisis, which might be the case for the COVID-19 because we are not sure, will it return uh, in, the, in the fall? Will it return when we will have a vaccination? How all these health measures will be implementing, implemented in the months and maybe years to come. Uh, in terms of the access to territory and asylum, once the pandemic even decreases, those restrictive border policies, especially in countries with governments that promote hardline migration policies, such as the case for Hungary, for Bulgaria, for Romania, may be hard to undo once uh, the, the, the crisis is over. So what we can pledge to say it like this, we'll, we'll say it like this. So first issue to be addressed is the need for more accountability of the agencies in charge of the protection of the border and which are at the same time providing or preventing, we, can, we saw that, access to territory and access to asylum for those in need of international protection. And the second issue, uh, is the need for more transparency in how border police are using their authority. And of course, the lack of transparency is in the very essence of the police work in general, as police often keep use of force information hidden from the public view, not only in the uh, countries that I, that I mentioned in this presentation, but also in general. And of course, finally, the EU should take a firm step concerning EU policy priorities in a way that would it make it clear that respect for human rights has the priority of the protection of the borders even during health crises such as, such as COVID-19. Uh, COVID and I spoke for 53 minutes, which is far too much. I'm very sorry. I'm very fond of this topic, so um, I could speak for, 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 for hours on that. And here you will see the resources that I used for the, for the preparing of this, of this presentation. And I think that this presentation will be available on the website of the, 